Hello and welcome back. If you haven't viewed previous videos in this series and you're new to InfoPath, I recommend you view the previous videos in this series. This presentation has a single learning objective, auto-field fields in InfoPath from a drop-down list box selection using a secondary data source. For some this is a tricky objective. To help as many people as possible, I've put together a step-by-step -step PowerPoint presentation. You will be able to download these slides from SlideShare. Most testers for this tutorial found having the slides to hand more useful than a step-by-step -step video instruction. As you probably guess, the video demo begins by illustrating how to configure an InfoPath controlled drop-down list to link to a SharePoint list. I then go on to show you how to link the InfoPath drop-down list control to populate a single or multiple InfoPath text box controls. Let's begin by looking at the end objective. For most people, understanding the end game helps to motivate them to achieve the outcome desired. I begin by showing you the restaurant audit form. I click the form preview to test the form. As you can see, I have InfoPath drop down disk control for restaurant name. It's pink to catch users' attention and to emphasize this field cannot be blank. The person filling in the form clicks the drop down disk control to view a number of restaurant names. When a restaurant name is clicked, you can immediately see multiple text boxes are automatically populated. For example, restaurant website. If the user changes the restaurant name, the text boxes are immediately updated to show the related data. You may be thinking, where am I storing the data and why not let users type the data in? Sometimes you don't need the ability to edit data. You just want to show the same data every time. An example would be departmental name. In the past, I have had to laboriously change user inputs for departmental names. I'm no longer amazed by people's creativity to develop names for departments they work for. For example, one firm had 20 names for finance department. Allowing so many name variations makes data analysis somewhat problematical. It's far better to provide users with a list of departmental names managed by a single person or group and let form fillers select the department they work for. To answer the question where is the data stored, let's switch to SharePoint list to show you where InfoPath drop-down list control data originates. As you can see, the list holds restaurant names. This field will populate my InfoPath drop-down list control. The other fields such as address, type of cuisine, notes, nearest tube, opening hours and website are linked to other text box controls in InfoPath. In the second half of the video, I'm going to show you how to link what the user chooses in InfoPath this drop down control to show the website address in the InfoPath text box control for website addresses. As you saw earlier in the video, multiple InfoPath text box controls can be linked to a single user choice in InfoPath drop down list control. But to keep it simple, I'm showing you how to link one. To add others, you simply replicate the same steps you made to add one data field connection. I appreciate this might be an arduous task. Nevertheless, the benefits of maintaining data integrity outweigh the disadvantages. I'm going to switch to the restaurant form we began developing in earlier videos. As you can see, the form has a drop-down list control called Restaurant Name. I want my user to click the drop down and select from a list of names a single name. The control list data is held on SharePoint site. I click the drop down to make this active control. You might have a text box control that you want to use as a drop down list. It's simple to change. While the control is active, leave your mouse hovering over the control and right click. Move your mouse cursor down the submenu list to highlight change control and select list box. Leaving your mouse cursor over the active control, right click and select drop down text box properties. 
In the Data tab, in the middle, you can see an option button for Get Choices from an External Data Source. Click the option to activate. Next, click the Add button. The wizard starts. We can accept the default, create a new connection to receive data, so I click Next. The next step, I select the option SharePoint Library or List, then click Next. Then I'm asked for SharePoint URL. I'm going to switch back to my SharePoint list. And I'm going to copy the URL up to the .com. Now I switch back to my info path wizard. And paste the URL and click next. Having clicked next, I'm asked which SharePoint list do I wish to use. I will choose London Restaurants and click Next. A new window requests me to select fields I want to use in my info path form. I'm going to place a tick in all the fields. The reason, later on, I want to be able to select all the SharePoint fields. And to be able to do this, I need to link them to info path fields. However, for this demo, I only require restaurant name. Notice ID is greyed out. This field enables communications between SharePoint and InfoPath. Before we click Next, I'm going to sort my restaurant name. I'm going to use the scroll bar to locate the field. Finally, I'm going to sort by Ascending and click the option Click Next. The following window asks me if I want to store the data onto my device for offline mode. This option raises data security and storage resource concerns. The database I'm using is small and data security isn't sensitive. Nevertheless, I'm going to place a tick. I'm simply going to click Next. Now I'm asked to name the connection. I tend to place SP lowercase at the beginning of the name to help me to identify the connection. The automatically retrieved data when form is open is ticked. I'm happy to leave this ticked. My database is small. If you had thousands of entries to download, this might make the form unusable. Now I click Finish. Look at the top-down list box properties window. You can see data source has been added. Entry values added linked to where the data is held, including the value in my case restaurant name and display box restaurant name. I could have set the display box to restaurant name, but set value to store restaurant manager's name in the form. I'm happy with my setup, so I click OK. I'm going to test the form by looking up at the ribbon, Home tab, and selecting Form Preview button. I click this to see a security warning message. This is OK to click Next. I see this message because I'm working in a unique development environment. In other words, I'm not directly connected to the SharePoint server. Depending upon your configuration, you might be asked for your credentials. Don't be annoyed. This step helps protect your server. Immediately, the form requests the data from the SharePoint server. So when I click the drop-down list, I can immediately select Let's review the stage we are at now. I have a drop down list control linked to a SharePoint list. I now want to add an automated capability that links what the user chooses from the InfoPath drop down list to another text box control. For example, the user selects restaurant name and the corresponding website address is shown in the linked text box. My first step is to create a new field to hold the address. I look over to the fields box and click the My Fields folder to make sure this is active. I cast my eyes and mouse cursor down to the bottom of the box and click the blue underlined text add field. I click and name the field restaurant website. Note capitals and words are joined, i.e. no space between the words. I click the drop down list for data type and select hyperlink and URL. Then I click OK. Next I click the newly created field and hold the mouse button down and drag the field over to the form. When I'm over the location as to where I wish to place the field, I should see two columns highlighted. I release the mouse button. 
I needed the text box to show the whole address and the current size won't allow this. I click the text box cell and hold my mouse down and drag the mouse across the cells I want to use. Now the cells are highlighted, I can look up at the ribbon and click the layout tab. In the merge section I can see the button to merge cells. I click this. Now my website address text box is big enough to show the entire web address. I can move to the next stage. Firstly, I click the restaurant name cell to make this the active control. The control I previously linked to SharePoint list. Next, I look up at the ribbon and click the home tab. Look across, I see rules section and rule add button. I click this and I move my mouse cursor down the revealed menu to highlight this field changes. Immediately another sub menu is shown. Moving the mouse cursor over I click set a fields value. In the rules details window I leave the action as set a fields value. Field box I click the button to select the field. This opens another window called select a field or group. Notice the field drop down list is set to main. You need to take care to understand the importance of this factor. Main refers to info path fields. Below you'll see the info path fields listed. Click restaurant website to make this your choice and click OK. Now I need to set the value. I click the FX button. A new window with the same name as previously select a field or group opens. Now I need to change field drop down list from main to secondary data source. In my case London restaurants. Looking at the below window section I see my SharePoint list fields. I click the data fields folder and then click D SharePoint list item read write folder. Below this I click the web address and click the description. Next I click the filter data button. The window opens called filter data. I click the add button. A new window opens called specific filter conditions. Clicking the first drop down list I click select a field or group option. Yet another window opens called select a field or group. In the data source drop down I select the secondary data source in my case London restaurants. I navigate to D share point list item RW folder and choose restaurant name. Below this is in the select drop down I should see title in my example. I click OK to return to the Pacific filter conditions window. The middle drop down is equal to can be left as is. I click the next last drop down list and click select a field or group option. Again a new window opens called specify filter conditions. In the fields drop down list I make sure main is selected. In the section below I select the field named restaurant name then click OK to return to Pacific filter conditions window. The specify filter conditions should read description is equal to restaurant name in my case I click OK to choose Pacific filter conditions window. I return filter data window. In the window I should read description equals restaurant name. I click to close this. I'm returned to the select a field or group window. I click to close and return to insert formula window. Before I close this I should read in window at description square bracket title equals restaurant name square bracket. I'm happy to test my formula. It's good practice. All being well the new window displays the results. The formula doesn't contain any errors. I click OK to close the verify formula window result. I click OK to the insert formula window. I click OK to the rule details window. I should now be able to see my form. I look up to the ribbon tab and in the form section I click the preview window. I should see the warning I'm connecting to an external data source. I agree to this so I click yes. Depending upon your configuration you may be asked to submit your sign-on credentials. 
Don't be annoyed that these measures help to protect your data. The form is now displayed, allowing us to test our work. I'll click the drop down list and choose restaurant name. When I click the name I've chosen, I should see the web address in the assigned field. As you saw in the earlier part of the video, I can have multiple text boxes linked to one control and that control dependent upon an external database and what the user chooses. Thank you.